Hi friends, I'm Winston Davenport. It's great to see you all again this week. I'm getting ready to start a new series on the subject of faith, which is an important subject for anybody who wants to live a successful life in the kingdom of God, which is already here and already now. I just finished a teaching called The Kingdom of God, and all nine of those videos are available on my website, which is winstondavenport.com, and they're also available on YouTube. I encourage you, if you have not seen that series, to check it out. There are nine videos that are about 15 minutes long each. Uh, This series is going to be revolutionary. I will be blowing your mind in this series in the same way that God has blown my mind when he revealed these truths to me that have changed my life from the inside out. Uh, The transformation that occurs when a person understands exactly what faith is and the power that it enables a believer to walk in, uh, your life will be changed. Everybody's lives will be changed. Unfortunately, for many years, uh, Christians have remained ignorant to the power, the authority that they have possessed in Jesus Christ. And because of that, the forward momentum of the church has been sluggish at best. But now that we know that Jesus has come and established the kingdom already, it's time for us to uh, hike up our boots and pant legs and, and march forward in this great and exciting Christian life. And faith is one of the most crucial points uh, to living in the kingdom. So that's why I'm going to talk about that. My question to you right now up front is how far are you willing to go? Now, I know that hundreds and hundreds of people will be watching these videos, this series, and I'm sure that all of you have come from different walks of life. Many of you may have just uh, turned to Jesus Christ, you know, in the last week, month, year, and you consider yourself a baby Christian. You're just sort of figuring things out. You're you're understanding how to cultivate a relationship with the Father, uh, with His Son. You're understanding who the Holy Spirit is inside of you and how to live in accordance with that reality. Some of you may be seasoned Christians and have grown up in the church like I did. Maybe you got saved when you were uh, just a a little tyke like I did and grew up in the church. And so uh, you have a much better understanding uh, in a sense of relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You might understand certain Christian principles or have uh, well formulated your own theology. Uh, Now, let me be clear. One of those is not better than the other. If you're a baby Christian, a new believer, in a sense, I believe that you actually have an advantage when it comes to faith because you haven't had years and years of religious teaching uh, going inside of you that has created doubt, that has caused you to question your relationship with God, that has placed so many uh, so many hindrances in your walk of faith that you, you know, have have wondered over the years how, you know, I'm a Christian and God says he loves me, but if he, see, if he loves me, then how come this happened to me or how come I still struggle with this? Friends, let me tell you something. I was raised in the church. I have heard it all. I have sat under various ministries. I have gone to various churches. I myself have been in ministry since I was 14 years old. And a few years ago, I was high and dry. I was not living a victorious lifestyle. I was beaten down. Uh, I was so depressed. I uh, was contemplating suicide. I was struggling with addictive sin to no end. I had prayed and cried out and begged God to set me free, begged God to take these struggles and these addictions away from me. And I saw absolutely no fruit, zero fruit in my life. And when things got so bad and circumstances basically came crashing down on me and I found myself in a dark, dark place, I had to question some things. I said, okay, God, my life bears no fruit in trying to live in accordance to the things that you have uh, have taught me apparently through uh, Christian church and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I need answers. I need a revelation of something new. I need you to open up my eyes to see things for how they really are. And uh, and God did. He met me in that place. And, and over the next couple years, he began opening my eyes to see what I had been missing out on all along. And friends, let me tell you, it is revolutionary. The this stuff, the, this stuff I'm going to share with you will change your life if you will receive it. As always, I say question everything, anything that another man teaches you, 
question and measure up against the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that you have the spirit of truth and you know all things. And uh, the Apostle John goes on to say in the book of 1 John, you don't need any man to teach you. Now, that's a powerful concept. You actually don't need any man to teach you. Not your Sunday morning pastor, not your Sunday school teacher, not even Winston Davenport. You do not need me to teach you because you have the spirit of truth inside of you. The only reason that I'm coming to you like this is because I am trying to encourage you to develop in your own life of faith so that you can get to the place where the training wheels of human teachers can be taken off and you can get your directive from God directly and have the confidence to move forward in accordance with what he is asking you to do and empowering you to do. Now, the church is full of people who are seeking power, and rightfully they should be. They're praying for revival. I've grown up my whole life. My friends and elders and family, they've all been praying for revival. They get on their knees, they cry out, they do, you know, repentance, or whatever they've been taught to do, and, and they cry out to God for revival. God, send revival to our city. Send revival to Missoula, Montana. Send revival to the United States of America. God, withhold your judgment. Pour out your glory. Pour out your love. Pour out your this, pour out that, give us more, give us more, give us more. And in reality, nothing has happened. There have been, uh, I, I suppose I can count some revivals, probably on one hand, that have happened during the course of my lifetime. And while those uh, have been great, they have only been temporary movements that have fizzled out. And while I'm thankful for what God has done through those, that is not a, a lifestyle, a sustained revival that one should come to know and expect from life in the kingdom, which is a consistent state of revival, uh, much like what Jesus and the disciples experienced walking on the search m m earth. What It's much like what the Apostle Paul experienced while walking on this earth. And I want nothing less than that sort of sustained revival. Nothing that comes and goes. Uh, nothing that comes in response to my works. No revival that comes in response to prayer and fasting and going to church and Bible studies and, and you know, these, this heart of humility and a heart of whatever. And everybody tries to place these conditions on revival as though if you do these things, then God will pour out revival. Friends, let me tell you, that is a lie that is works-based, and that will take you in the opposite direction of where you are trying to go. Legalistic in nature, and I'm here to set you free and to, and to uh, open your eyes to see the truth of the kingdom, the revival, the end times revival that is already here, already operating on the earth, and to let you know that you may pray and beg God for revival till you turn blue in the face, but God will not send revival to this earth because God cannot send revival to this earth. Why? Because this earth is already in 100% revival. God has no more ability to pour out uh, a greater level revival on this earth than he has ability to send his son Jesus to die on the cross again. How can I say that with such confidence? Because I know that when Jesus hung on the cross and said, it is finished, I know that he meant it. I know that Jesus came to establish his kingdom on this earth, and I know that Jesus did not fail in his mission. The kingdom is here, the kingdom is now, it is established, and as Jesus said, the kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within me. And you know what that means, friends? Revival is inside of you. Revival is inside of me. Every believer, and I don't just mean someone who's prayed a sinner's prayer, but every believer, everyone who is full of faith, everyone who knows and takes hold of and lives according to their identity in Christ is 100% living in revival. And then it's a matter of getting that revival that's on the inside of you into the world around you. Well, how do we take what's a spiritual reality and turn it into a physical reality? Good news is Jesus prescribed a surefire method of this process and he called it faith. In fact, he said that nothing is impossible with faith. Nothing at all is impossible to those who believe. He said that those who believe will move mountains. He said anything that those people ask will be done for them. He said that those people will heal the sick. He said those people will cleanse the lepers. He said those people would raise the dead. Now Jesus said this as a fact. This will happen to those who believe. Anywhere the true gospel, the true good news is preached, these signs and wonders will follow. 
Jesus did not leave room for interpretation. He did not say they might follow. He, sa- he did not say that you might do these signs and wonders. No, Jesus didn't mince words. He made it crystal clear that you will perform these miracles. You will live according to supernatural power. And you will fulfill the kingdom mandate, the kingdom assignment that I came to earth in the first place to deliver to you. You will carry on my ministry to the ends of the earth. Friends, this is very different than what I was taught in church. I was taught that we had a God who was in control of everything. I was taught that every time a butterfly flaps its wings, it's because God allowed it to do so. I was taught that every circumstance and every event that happened in my life, whether good or bad, was God's will and that He was doing it. I was taught to give thanks when good things happen and to give thanks when bad things happen because all things uh, come from God. Friends, this is a lie. This is not true at all. I'm here to tell you that God is not in control over every event that happens on this earth. Does that sound blasphemous to you? Does that blow your mind? It should, because God is sovereign, and sovereign literally means the highest. He is the most high or the highest. He is sovereign, but he is not in control of every event, every circumstance that happens on this earth. Now let me blow your mind a little further by making this bold statement. I do not believe that God is actually doing anything on this earth today. Now am I what's called a cessationist, meaning that the gifts, the power has passed away with the apostles? Certainly not. Not at all. The power of God is evident and active in our lives today. The gifts of the Spirit are alive and well and powerful and Uh, exciting and exhilarating right here, right now on the earth today. But God himself is not at work on the earth today and neither is his son Jesus because Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father when he had finished his work and he said this was a good thing. Jesus said to his disciples, it's a good thing that I go to the Father. It's a good thing that I'm going to be sitting down since my work is finished because I will send one in my place and he will lead and guide you into all truth. He will teach you all things concerning me. And Jesus sent his presence, his Holy Spirit, to come and indwell the life of everyone who believes. And those of us believers now have what the Bible says is the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit living inside of us. We are Jesus Christ on the earth today. Well, you say, I don't really see that happening. I don't see, uh, I don't see evidence. I don't see power. I don't see the types of signs and wonders that Jesus performed while he was on the earth. I can tell you why. It's simply a matter of faith. Jesus knew who he was. He was so firmly rooted and grounded in his identity as the Son of God that it was no problem for him to operate in that mountain moving faith that healed the sick and raised the dead. He told us that we would not only do the same things, but even greater things because he goes to the Father. So Jesus going to the Father enables us to do greater things than he did while walking the earth. How is that possible? What could, what could be greater than what Jesus already did on this earth? Well, friends, I tell you something. I have already seen some, some amazing revolutionary miracles on this earth. And I believe that we are just beginning to get a glimpse of what God wants to do through us on this earth. But it's a matter of obedience. It's a matter of coming into alignment. It's a matter of tuning in to the frequency of the Holy Spirit and living that lifestyle of faith. That means a renewed mind. That means a mind that is in perfect agreement and perfect alignment with everything that God says that you are, that everything that God says that I am. What that does is that puts us in position to operate not according to natural law, but according to spiritual principles and spiritual law. Jesus made it so abundantly clear how we are to do this, and he called it faith. And that is why I am going to be coming to you for the next few weeks talking about this massive and uh, breakthrough uh, and powerful, uh, revolutionary uh, subject that is simply called faith. Uh, Friends, thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Uh, I hope this introduction has whetted your appetite. I hope that you are beginning to get excited. And even if you feel overwhelmed by some of the things that I said, I encourage you, stick around, tune in next week, and watch what I have to say. I assure you, I am not just spouting theology. I'm not just... Uh, I'm not just saying words to you. I am talking not only from a, uh, a biblical, a biblically founded stance when I talk about w- walking in faith and power, but I am talking from an experiential place as well. I know 
I know what it's like to live powerless. I know what it's like to be dejected. I know what it's like to have life be so hopeless that I was contemplating killing myself. And friends, that was several years ago and everything has changed for me. And I can assure you that everywhere I have preached this message of faith, the body of Christ has risen up and they begin to see revolutionary breakthrough in their lives. They begin to see the miracles that they've longed for. They have, uh, they have seen loved ones come home that were gone. They have seen rebellious children turned to grace. They have seen physical ailments be healed. They have seen financial breakthrough. They have seen their ministries take off all because they aligned themselves with truth and started accepting what I'm going to be teaching you, which is straight from the Father. It's what he has taught me. It has changed everything in my life and it will change everything in yours. Keep tuning in. Visit www.winstondavenport.com for excellent resources, written teachings every week, powerful prophetic worship, soaking sessions live that are uploaded every week. There's awesome worship music on there for you to stream live or to download. Uh, Awesome resources on winstondavenport.com. I encourage you guys to check it out. God bless you. We'll see you next week.